Hello everyone and welcome to episode 150 of the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a creative podcast featuring my crochet, knitting and sewing for the most part. Um, you can find the show notes for the things I talk about in the description box underneath the video. That's where I put pattern names, yarn names, useful links, so on and so forth. Um, if you would like to support me in these podcasting endeavours of mine, you can give this video a thumbs up, you could leave a comment, you could do the super thanks if you really was feeling generous. Um, you could subscribe, that's when you can, uh, you know, you'll see my new videos and you can also hit the notification bell if you want and then you'll get a notification when I post a new video. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for coming back if you're a returning viewer. Um, I hope you're well. Camera is doing weird things today. I don't know if I'll be able to edit this, but it looks really strangely dark in here and like it looks like purple up there. Mm, weird. I don't know if it's just a now we're getting into more wintry light type thing, but I don't know. Um, yeah, so I hope you've been uh, keeping well. Uh, what have I done since I last spoke to you? Well, I finished a project, this one. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second. And and I've been doing some more house things. I did post another sort of housey makeover -y decoration video um, last week, would that have been, I guess? Um, yeah, so that was us making over Gary's office, our home office downstairs, so um, thank you very much for your comments if you watched that and enjoyed it. Um, again, because it's for Gary, it's slightly different to perhaps my own aesthetic and the aesthetic you've been used to seeing on my channel, but um, it's interesting to do something a little bit outside your comfort zone as well sometimes, isn't it? So yeah, it was quite fun to do. Um, but yeah, let's get on with this stuff shall we the knitting the crochet what we're here for so my jumper is finished woohoo um so this is the cloudy day sweater by suvi knits the yarn is gorgeous 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 lay family yarn it's their dk weight yarn and this colorway is my sunkiss succulents colorway that um kelly and nick invited me up to um, dye my own colourway. So this is my colourway that I came up with and oh my god this yarn is just gorgeous. I like the colourway obviously because I made it but just the yarn to knit with it's so plump and squishy and gorgeous. Um, yeah so this was an absolute pleasure to make. Um, I did have a couple of little stumbling blocks um, of my own making I would say. The pattern is faultless absolutely perfect and like I said working on this lace pattern um, just made it go really quickly and the fact it was DK where I've been making a lot of um, four ply stuff recently it's made it go really quickly so that's felt really good um, so yeah no problems with everything followed the pattern as written um, I haven't made any modifications at all yet actually but I possibly will so the only stumbling block I had was this sleeve, which I actually picked up four sleeves less than the pattern said, than that was correct, that I did correctly on this side. So in the last podcast, I was talking about whether to frog it back or whether to not bother, whether I could just block it out. The overwhelming majority of you were team frog it, re-knit it. And yes i think you're absolutely right and that is what i did and i think that's what i needed to hear i think my little head knew like you know you want to really you know you should really um <laughs> but was trying to prevaricate around it um but yeah you, most of you were saying yeah you're gonna need to redo that <laughs> so i just did i got on with it and did it a couple of you were like oh you'll block it's all right and some of you said about um ways to reduce the other sleeve but the thing was I had a really nice fit that I liked on this sleeve so I wouldn't have wanted to make this one smaller it definitely was a case of making this one a bit bigger so it's normally I have quite a I think I've got fat arms compared to the general average of the 
population because when I have patterns I find the arms come up as not like a tight fit but snug like a fitted fit whereas I perhaps don't want that I want a little bit more what's the word flexibility or something you know I want a bit of give um so yeah I kind of had that in mind with this pattern so I made sure that when I when I originally did it you know that it was it seemed like it was going to be enough for what I wanted so yeah so I definitely because I actually got a really good fit on these sleeves I definitely didn't want to go any smaller so I did uh, frog it I re-knit it so that was absolutely fine I haven't actually blocked this yet um, so this sleeve is ever so slightly more crinkly than this one and I was thinking I could pretty much get away without blocking it I will put in my little tra -la round so you can see hello what do you want can I help you He's just been leaping to the hall and back, which means he's gone to the stairs, which means he wants to... Oh, he wants to go downstairs. Now you're jumping up. My God, it must be urgent. I'd better go see to what he wants. Mm. Hey, apparently he doesn't want to go downstairs. He just wants to be part of things or something. Um, so where were we? Sleeves, this was all going fine. So yes, my only remaining thing was the neck. Oh, that was it. I did attempt to modify the neck so I went up this is as per the pattern as you see now last time I just had instead of folding over and uh, tucking the neckline in as it says in the pattern I just knit up straight and then did tubular cast off which was too stretchy which I knew would be too stretchy so I did go back and modify that but I think this is the one thing I will change is that I still feel like the neck is stretching quite a lot and I don't love how this kind of folded hem is sitting. Stop interrupting. It's very rude. I'm talking to the people. Do you want to see if we want this at the issue? There we go. You want your time in the sun? Oh, you just want to cuddle. Oh, okay. You sit on my lap then. Is that better? what a whinge bag um the last change i will make is i will take this back knit it on a yet another needle size down so i've gone down one size i think i'll go down another i'll just knit the small hem again neck band again and then just cast off with a regular cast off maybe even sort of quite firmly to give it quite a you know to give it that stability because the two suggestions i had when i said the neck time neckline was too loose was a you could put elastic around it which i did think if i was keeping this neckline i might try or that i could do a a row of um crochet slip stitches round to sort of bring it in and give it more stability so i think what i will do is i'll I'll go back, I'll redo it as I said, and then if I still need something on top of that, I'll do I'll use one of those ideas, I think. Um but I think it'll be fine. I think it's it's not sort of the size of the neckline that's concerning to me so much now as just I'm not loving how that's sitting at the back. I mean maybe it'd be fine if I blocked it as well, I suppose, but I don't know. I kind of just don't love the, f the fatness of it. The extra sort of bulk. So that's the one change I might make um, and then yarn wise so I when I got my lay family yarn um, I was planning to make a different jumper so I got the right amount of yarn yardage for this different jumper and then I changed it to this and so I was a little bit on the hesitant side as to if I would have enough yarn so what I did is I actually knit on a slightly larger gauge in the pattern size. I guess that's a modification, isn't it? Which was an idea I got from someone else absolutely ages ago. Um, but that was my plan to try and conserve yarn and that did work. And I've got the whole um, jumper out of my gorgeous sunkissed succulents colourway. So yeah, overall very pleased with my end result. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's anything else to say about that. 
I don't know why I'm trying to show you in this weird way. I'll put a film in of me, you know. Let's move on to the next project. Last time I was talking about my hexagon flower blanket. I won't go into that one again this time because it hasn't moved on. I did have a couple of comments saying um, they were looking forward to the tutorial for the half hexagons and how I'm doing the ends of the blanket to square them off. Um, which is a very good point because I did a tutorial for my mini hexagons, how I'm joining them and how I'm joining the flowers to the blanket. So yes, it makes total sense to finish that project and um, do tutorials for the rest. So I will work on that. I'll make some time next week to work on that. So if you are looking forward to those tutorials or expecting them or would be interested in having them, um, yeah, let me know. Um, but my plan is to try and get that done so hopefully that will be of interest to you but yeah let me know if it is um, but i have got some new project starts that i can talk about so the first one is going to be knitting because that's on top so the pattern i'm making is the peak sweater by suvi knits again a few of hers caught my eye so i really like that quite oversized and it's got this pretty little pattern on the neck on the uh, arm rather uh, so that's what I'm mating, making and I got the main yarn for this the other day at um, Unravel Autumn so that's this one it's by the grey sheep I always want to say the little grey sheep for some reason but no just the grey sheep um, yeah I just saw that and I thought oh that's exactly the sort of look and colour I was looking for and I'm also because this is a four ply yarn and the pattern is for double knit she says just checking that as she's saying it to make sure she's not making stuff up yep double knit I'm holding it together with just a mohair this is just a drops kid silk mohair um, so those are together I did a little swatch so here's my swatch so that's what it looks like knit together which I really liked <clears throat> I like that kind of mottled look to it because the original I don't know if you can see in these pictures I've actually put it out in colour by mistake on my own didn't even know we had the colour cartridge to it out it's got that sort of mottled feel to it which I really liked so I'm quite happy with that mild mould look to swatch that's all been blocked and everything feels nice and floppy and lovely and I have cast it on and I've got a sausage, a really long sausage <laughs> or a snake, I suppose. So it doesn't really look like anything much I can show you at this moment because it just all rolls up all the time. Um, yeah, so not much of a visual spectacle for you all. Can you hear his feet clattering as he wanders around the place? I don't know why I don't just sit down. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm knitting this, I'm actually knitting this on slightly bigger yarn um, needles than specified as well. So the pattern calls for four again for double knit. These are four and a half, um, which is what I did with the swatch. So I started on a four and it just felt quite tight and I just didn't love it so I tried the four and a half and I blocked that and I loved that feel of the fabric so I'm happy with using the four and a half needles but I am getting a bit bigger gauge and I didn't really intend <laughs> to do the same sort of trick of using bigger needles smaller size having said that although that wasn't my intention I'm wondering if that's what I might end up doing because I've knit this amount but I mean, this is like one side. I mean, it's supposed to be oversized, but I think maybe, maybe it might be really quite oversized. This measurement is coming up 
about was it four inches no maybe not that much no two inches bigger than the pattern states for the size I'm making so which makes sense because I'm using bigger needles but obviously I didn't think about that and take it into account when I was choosing my size so maybe I should undo and start the next size down I'm not sure yeah to be continued <clears throat> but I haven't got a massive amount of progress on that because I've been working on something else so let's show you that next crochet this time it's a blanket shall I show you I'll show you the colors first these are the colors I've picked out to make it out of so I have in my bedroom I'll pop a bit of oops, footage in for you just a very basic granny square blanket little three round grannies um, which I made a while ago, quite some time ago. Really love the blanket, it's a really nice weighty blanket and I've pulled it out for winter because it looks really nice on the old bed and is nice and snug for winter. Um, so I really like that, but it's very cool colours, so the main sort of joining colour. So I think I did two rounds in loads of different colours and then I did continuous join uh, for the last round. So the last round is all in blue and I love it but I really wanted something a little bit paler and a little bit warmer so I've pulled this out for my first two rounds to make my first two rounds out of and then I've got some paler but not just one I've got a whole load of paler sort of beigey sort of neutral I suppose neutral tones to make the last round with and then I'm joining as I go so let's show you the effect we're getting here it is what do you think I was interested to see how it looks on camera I like it, I like it a lot. It feels like it's a tiny bit more subtle in person. Again, I suppose it depends how I will end up editing this video, but at the moment the contrast looks quite amped up. So I might try and turn that down and give you a bit more of a realistic view of it. Um, Not sure what I'm going to say next. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? So my sort of inspiration, if you like, was just that basic idea of wanting something in warm tones, wanting something that had a cooler last round, um, sorry, a paler last round. And I just wanted something that was warm, cosy, kind of inspired by a sitting by the fire, all wrapped up snug kind of feel. That's the feel I want the colours to have but I has also popped in the odd little bit of blue just to I don't know just felt right to just shove a bit of blue in so I've mostly got these pale creams and beiges for the final round but I have popped in um, the odd sort of darker one and I've even got this dark dark one in there which I might scatter a few of those throughout so this is what I have been mostly working on. This has been making me very happy. Um, yeah, not else, a lot else to say about it. If you are interested in how I make my granny squares, I have got a tutorial for that. Um, so I've got a tutorial for just making a classic granny square. And then I've got a tutorial for how I do it when I'm changing colours. Um, so that's the method I'm using. Um, I'm also using joiners to go and I haven't got a I don't think I have any kind of tutorial for that certainly not for squares I think I've I think I've got a tutorial for how I do it for hexagons I mean the theory is the same 
Um, so yeah, that might be something you are possibly interested in. I don't know, let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy working on that again and I'm also quite happy to be having a project that <laughs> I feel a little bit more motivated about. I've, I've been really struggling actually with, with my crochet projects, finding something that I can settle into and be um, happy to make. I guess I've been more drawn to knitting projects lately. So yeah, so I'm feeling quite inspired by this. My only concern on this now is just the size. So my the one on my bed that this is inspired by is 26 by 28 squares and it's big enough but it feels like it could be a little bit more generous so my initial aim was this was let's make it really lovely and generous and yeah sumptuously you know so we've got some nice hang down the sides and so on so I was thinking I'd do 30 by 30 squares and then with the border as well I thought that would be lovely nice and opulent size um so nine uh, so that means 900 squares which is a little bit oh, um <laughs> not only from the making point of view but from the yarn point of view so what I the yarn I'm using um as you can see from my barrel of bits is just a whole random collection of leftovers mini skeins and it's a real stash busting thing which is brilliant because I really need to do that um I've got so much this is the tip of the iceberg here I've got stuff in other boxes you can't see and all the sort of like you know where I've used them for socks or other projects leftovers so I definitely need to work through some of that stash so um I wanted to pull out some of that but I thought rather than doing it four ply after I've just done that flower hexy and sort of kind of lost my way with it it was too daunting I mean imagine how many squares I'd need to make if I made it out of four ply oh, um doesn't bear thinking about so I'm holding this double and that seems to make a nice DK weight. I mean, I, you know, like all four ply yarn and things, there are variances, so some are thicker than others, but overall it seems to be working out for DK quite nicely. So that means an awful lot of yardage though, if you're four ply double for an entire massive blanket. So it's a king size bed I'm making it for. Um, so the numbers are quite, <laughs> quite huge. So I'm kind of not worried about the first two rounds, the centres, because I've got quite a lot of, like I say, I've got an awful lot of leftovers, minis that I can put into the cores. I don't even mind putting some of my full skeins in or, you know, breaking into some of them. So that's fine. I'm not particularly concerned about the yardage for that. What I am a bit concerned about is the yardage for my neutrals. Oops. So it looks like I've got a lot in here, but I've got quite a few, let's show you sort of some of these that I've pulled out. So this is an actual DK yarn. So I've got a couple of these that I'm just using. I've got another four ply, so that'll be held double in a kind of neutral. And I've got a few sort of bigger skeins that I've done given to the cause but in terms of all the little amounts I haven't got that many and I'm kind of getting through them quite quickly which is great in terms of using up stash kind of way but because I've gone for quite a mottled sort of randomized look to these uh, final rounds what I don't want to do is sort of use up all the interesting slightly variegated um, you know more tonal yarns in just one corner and then run out and have to sort of buy something else and it just be too sort of monotone as I get through the blanket so I want to make sure that these sort of you know the, those nice more interesting yarns I've got are, are spread throughout the blanket so that's a little bit of a concern so I'm not quite sure what 
I'm going to do there. I mean, I'll go through stash again and see if there's anything else I can pull out to sort of donate to the cause. I've got a nice, there's one here I've pulled out. This was a leftover from a jumper. So this is an elderflower stitches skein. So I made a, what did I make in this? Oh, my Maybury cardigan, of course. Yeah, so I held this with, um, it, mohair is what I'm trying to say. It was a Amy's yarn though. I think it's, what does she call it? Bare naked is it or something? That doesn't sound quite right. Anyway, she has a mohair and I held it with that. So. And I had a whole skein left over. I think I over ordered to be honest. But I thought, well, it's a lovely, beautiful, delicate colour. I really love the colour. So that's fine, I should just keep the skein. But I thought this could be this could come in and be part of the um, you know, outsides. The last round. So I shall add that into the cause, but yeah. So I'll see how I'm getting on. I need to do some calculations. I have made here. I can't remember how many it was. It's a roughly 70 squares to make up this. So I'll weigh it and I'll do some calculations and kind of see roughly how much I need and I'll weigh what I've got. And uh, yeah, see if I can make some intelligent guesstimations about how far I can get based on what I've got and uh, take it from there. But yeah, actually enjoying a crochet project is good news. And I have got quite a few ends on the end here, look. Ooh. But I'm not going to get into a not weaving them in situation. I know it looks like there's a lot there, so I haven't woven them in. But what I'm doing is I'm doing lots of first rounds, weaving the ends in. Then I'm doing the second rounds, weaving the ends in. Then I'm adding them on. And then I'm weaving them in. So I've just done a whole rake of adding them in. And now I'm going to sit and weave my ends in because I kept leaving them for my flower hexy blanket and it didn't go well. So I can't let them get too out of hand else it just becomes too overwhelming. Then finally is a project in the planning stage. Um, so I also got while I was at Ravelry with Sam in autumn these two yarns. So this one was from the Raw Wool Company. And can you see the skeins up there? Um, which is a lovely yarn company based in Cornwall. They rear their own sheep, get it spun locally. So that is completely, so hence the raw, because there's no dyeing or sort of over processing of any kind. It's just fleece that's then spun. So that's the natural colour. So love that, got that. And then I had this one, which was by Kettle Yarn. Um, and I'll have to put the name up because I can't remember it. But it's basically a kind of mohair looking yarn, but it's got like yak and other things into it. And it's the softest, fluffiest, bounciest, squidgiest gorgeous yarn in all of creation i have decreed that to be so um <laughs> so my i was thinking well i'm i'm thinking lots of things as per and none of it coherent um obviously so this is a four ply and it feels quite fine yarn so i could just make something with this and i think at the time when I bought it to justify it, <laughs> I found a pattern that I'd quite like to make, which I spoke about before. But I have subsequently continued the search and found other things I'd quite like to make. One of which is a rin ranunculus, which I think, I'm sure all of you will have made, because everyone seems to make that. I mean, if you knit, obviously you won't have made it if you just crochet or whatever, but because um, it's a knitting pattern. So yes, so I could make that. Now that pattern is written so that you can make it with kind of any weight yarn. Then it's made on size six needles, I think it was. So I could just make it with this as is. And it would make quite an open light 
sweater or I could pair it with this which was what I was thinking when I was at Unravel that they might work quite well together and sort of make it a bit more fluffy squishy warmer jumper so when I was imagining the ranunculus I was kind of thinking just of this of the darkness of this and the colour of this and thinking that would look really nice But when I actually looked at the details of the ranunculus in terms of how light a yarn this would be, I'm not sure it's going to give the effect that I want, which is something a bit warmer. So anyway, this is a very long winded way of explaining what I mean. But so I've done a swatch and I've done a swatch of both. So I've done it together. This is where I started holding them together. So that gives that kind of mottled look, which I really love for the peak sweater. That was my intention for that. But I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it for this project. Partly because I'm doing it on that project, so do I want to do the same thing again? And partly because when I was visualising my making of the ranunculus, is that how you say it? I was imagining this sort of darker tone, it all in this darker tone. So now I'm not 100% sure where I'm going with this. So I really like that colour. I think it'll look really nice in that colour. I've got things it'll go with in that colour. So that's solid. <laughs> that's good. But what I don't love is how open... I mean, you can sort of... You can see by seeing through it. You can see my light through it and everything. I don't love how open that is. It's not really what I was going for. But maybe that's not a bad thing. I have knit quite a few jumpers lately. I've knit this one. I've got another one in the needle. I did my Iceland one the other day. I mean, how many knitted really warm jumpers do I need? That's a valid question, isn't it? Um, but the feeling of this is off the charts. I mean, it's amazing. I've blocked this now. I've left it attached because I've only got three of these, so just thinking of the yardage so I can undo it if I need to and it's all part of the thing, but I did block it as well. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, this feels like the most bouncy, squishy, delightful fabric ever. Love it. It feels really lofty and fluffy and I think it'll be really nice and warm. I think it will go with a lot of things. I think it will be easy to wear. But I also think there's an argument for just the brown one. So it's another one of my decision quandaries that I can't quite decide. When I was knitting it, I was like, oh, it's got to be this. This feels amazing. This is what I imagined. Something fluffy and warm. Amazing. I'm going with that. But then my little head keep going, but you imagined it in the brown. You wanted that, didn't you? That's what you wanted because that's what my brain sounds like apparently um <laughs> so I thought well I'll try you know I'll knit just the brown and see how that goes and like I say I love the look not sure I'm happy with the fabric I suppose I could knit to a tighter gauge but then I've got the issue of only got three I could order more I suppose they do have patch numbers on as well the guy on the stand I don't know his name I'm afraid was saying to us, even though it's not dyed or anything, because the colour is affected by which fleeces they put in. So basically, you know, you'll have natural variations, even in the same breed of sheep, you'll have natural variations in the fleeces. So it'll depend which batch of fleece they send to the mill to exactly what shade it comes out. So they do have batch numbers so that you can match to shades if you know if they've got some left of your batch then you know you can order the same one so i guess that's the possibility yeah i don't know like i say while i was knitting it i was all this then i convinced myself that no i had to stay true to the idea in my mind of it being brown and i definitely wanted to do the brown and then it sat on the side for a while and then I came back to this because <laughs> of the squishy fluffiness. So yeah, I don't know. 
So now I'm asking for your input and see how that makes me feel. Uh, or if you think of anything else that I haven't considered or just what your thoughts are generally. I mean, so, you know, I've got time for this to percolate. I've got my peak sweater on the go. I've got my blanket on the go. I don't need to rush into casting this on. So I'll, I will, I'm happy just to sit and let that percolate away and see what decision I arrive at. But yeah, your input would be much appreciated on my two-tone swatch. So let me know which you think. Warm and fluffy, brown and light. That's confusing because this has got light in it. Warm and fluffy or brown and lacy? I don't know. <laughs> How am we going to characterise the two choices? Mm -mm. Yarn cell double or just brown on its own, raw wool on its own. Yeah, I'd be interested to see what you think. So that's all of my crafty, creative making endeavours I have to share with you at the moment. That is as far as I've got since last time we spoke. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been taking a little bit of a back seat while I work on the housey stuff, which um, I'm also putting up on the channel which I'm kind of doing because it kind of carries on the story because I brought you into the whole house moving story and sort of did a tour of where we are now and all of that malarkey. Um, yeah, because I'm sort of, that's something I'm working on. I'm kind of keeping sharing, which I don't know. I don't know how much anyone is interested or wants that, but <laughs> you're getting it, I'm afraid, whether you like it or not at the moment. Um, yeah, I hope that's not too much of a problem for anyone. YouTube doesn't like me coming out of my niche, I know. It would like me to just stick to one thing. But you've got to do what you need to do, want to do, haven't you? So that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. So that's it from me for now. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed our little chat and I shall look forward to chatting with you further in the comments um, and I hope you get some lovely quiet and peaceful crafting time until next time bye, bye. you're being very disruptive today it's not helpful <laughs> rubbish podcaster I'm awful Bertie I'm so awful at it I am, yes. <laughs>